like there's been a lot of buildup for this video. And I know, okay, so this is the F3 review. Now, it's the F3 for 2016. Permobile has come out with a new version of the F3 and F5 chairs, but essentially they are still the same chair. They've made a few changes, mostly to the aesthetic of the chair. The plastics look a little different. And I believe, well, I know the foot plates will come further in towards the chair to give you shorter overall length on the new ones versus this one I'm sitting in. I don't know, they might have moved the ICS module to the back to accommodate for that space. But even though I'm a few years late to the party, this is still gonna be the same basic chair. And we're not gonna cover the F5, I will mention it a few times, but it's kind of its own thing. While it does look very similar, it's got different motors and different options and different suspension and a bunch of other things. So anyways, just to give you a quick look here, this is, uh, this is the chair. It has the 3G seating on it. Now, I got this chair new. It was not specifically designed for me and it didn't have a joystick and a few other things, so I basically put all the seating together on this thing and set it up into a working chair for myself. Let's get a quick bit of history out of the way. So Permobile, I mean, they've been making chairs pretty much forever. You can go back to way back in the day and find some crazy looking things with massive tires and like the first lead acid batteries that I'm sure ever existed. But if we start in the modern era, the Chairman 2K was kind of their first mainstream chair. I mean, that's just what I'm gonna say. Which, the Chairman 2K is actually very similar to what the C500 was. And it was a big, heavy-duty, steel-framed beast. It was front-wheel drive, they could handle a lot of weight, it was really solid. It had a really advanced, at the time, drive, uh, drive motor gearbox system on it. They had standing options available. So Chairman 2K and the C500 is kind of where we're going to start this whole thing. After that, they made some other things like the <coughs> C <coughs> C300 and the <coughs> C350, um, which was a C300 turned around backwards. I'm going to ignore that those existed because those were a little bit out of step with what Permobile had been doing in the past. And I'm pretty sure it was a result of insurance companies putting pressure on them saying, hey, we need something cheaper, we need something lighter weight, we need something that can be built faster. Um, so the C300s, they had galvanized steel sheet metal that was just riveted together in, uh, it wasn't really a frame, but I've worn out three of those chairs now, and each time I use them for less than a year. Granted, the first time I weighed like 317 pounds, which was 60 pounds over the weight limit, <laughs> but uh, the subsequent ones, they still melt like butter. <laughs> so we're gonna skip over that. The F3 is basically the new version of the old C500. They've gone back to the same steel construction. It's like thick, heavy gauge steel. I forget what the actual gauge is. It's pretty close to quarter inch. Uh, in my video where I replaced the batteries in this F3, you can kind of get an idea and see how thick the frame is. Real quick view of the chassis on these chairs. You can see we're actually made out of a pretty good amount of uh, steel now. I'm not quite sure where my calipers are at this exact moment in time, but I'm guessing we're 3 8 uh, Five sixteenths, I believe. The one different thing with this review video than the previous ones I've done is I actually own this chair. All the other chairs we looked at, I basically had access to them for maybe an hour or two, uh, and we just kind of had to run around and do whatever we were going to figure out in that amount of time. But since I own this one, and I've been using it for a while, I kind of feel like I need to try and cover a few more things. Now, we start getting into the F5 and the M5 and some other things like that. There's some other issues there. They're kind of pushing the limits of what these RNET control systems are capable of. But for the most part, these chairs are good, heavy duty, reliable, just sort of a basic, you want a chair that works, the Permobile is what you want. But we're gonna go over a few things. I actually went out to a friend's farm and drove over a variety of surfaces, kind of did a little comparison between the suspension on his M3 and this F3, 
Uh, turns out the F3 has two more shock absorbers than the M3 does. Did I say that right? The F3 has four shock absorbers and the M3 has two. And I didn't think it would make that big of a difference, but it definitely does. Anyways, enough of my yapping. Let's uh, head out there and basically drive around on this thing for an afternoon and see if I can cover all the points that we want to and give you guys a good idea of what owning one of these chairs will be like. So it's finally time to review the F3 Permobile wheelchair. And I was driving all around town trying to find like an empty parking lot or something to record this video in, but after two hours of driving around, I kind of came up. You would think after like three years of doing this, I don't care about people seeing me talking to a camera, but they always come over and want to talk to you and then you can't get anything done. So I came out to this farm and see there's a tractor. You can tell it's a farm and there's like miniature horses over here somewhere. Uh, it's hiding in the shade, but probably the same thing I should be doing. But anyways, uh, we're going to run around out here and I guess show you how this thing rides on asphalt and some other stuff. So like I was saying earlier, the F3 is basically the next iteration of the C500. I know the C300 was in the middle there, but it's not even really the same thing. So like any Permobile, you have the options for all of the power seating functions, which I guess I'll demonstrate for no reason. You can recline a long way. I've actually never run this thing all the way back. Oh look, there's bees above me. <laughs> I never would have seen the bees unless I did this. And then, uh, I think I can use the seat elevator while I'm like this. Yeah, there we go. Getting closer to the bees. And then, uh, of course we have power legs. There we go. And then I think, this may not be the best idea, but I think I can tilt back while I'm like this. I'm gonna hold on. Yep, that's definitely sketchy. Um, okay, back to normal position. Which actually leads me to the second thing I want to show you. It has memory seating available on it. As you can see, I'm just holding the joystick forward and the chair is going back into its normal position. Now, since I did not get this chair brand new, uh, I am using, well, actually the chair was brand new, but it didn't have a joystick. I'm using the older style of the Arnett joystick here. If you got one of these chairs back in 2016, you're probably using one of these controllers, but all of them are compatible with the memory seating functions. It has to be programmed uh, by your dealer or Permobile, but as you can see here, I've got M1 and M2. And I've got M2 sort of saved as a reclining position and M1 is just the normal position. Yeah, so what I found, especially after leaning back like that and you want to put your chair back into the normal position, like all your muscles and stuff may not be very happy with you after stretching like that. So it's kind of hard to tell what your normal position would be. So it's super handy to have that memory there. It'll just go back. Like right now, I do not feel like I'm in the same position that I was before I did that. But memory seating is there. I think they have three of them that you can save. Maybe more with the newer joystick, but at least with this one, it seems to work all right. Although no matter where you go, you're not immune from guys on Harleys. <laughs> They're always driving by. <laughs> so I don't remember where I put it in the video. It might've been before this or after this, but I was demonstrating the active reach for uh, getting into my dryer, which is stacked on top of my washing machine. But since we're out here in this open space, let me point the camera down a little bit and I'll show you what that looks like. Set down my phone. Now, technically to use this feature, there's some knee supports that are supposed to be attached right here to keep you from sliding out of the chair. I don't have those, so I'm just gonna tighten up my belt really tight and sort of hold on. And uh, yeah, safety. So we go in here and then you'll notice that the foot plates, actually, can you see my foot? Yeah, I think you can see my feet there. You'll see my feet going out and the chair tilts up and it starts raising and all the actuators start doing things all at once. Oh, and side note, I actually called Permobile's tech support today. I'm having an issue right now after this chair got repaired. The foot plates will interfere with the easy lock bracket. So I have to be slightly elevated before I use this function. Otherwise they will collide. They told me the process on how to fix that. I just haven't done it yet. Normally with this mode, you can put your foot plates all the way down on the ground 
so you don't have to flip them up when you transfer and the chair will be tilted forward a little bit. But I'll show you sort of the basic function here. So it's reclining and my feet are going out. And the leg rests are lengthening a little bit. Then it starts tilting forward. And this is when I need to hold on. Okay, I can't go any further than that, otherwise the foot plates will interfere with the easy lock. But this is one of the modes. I don't think this is technically active reach, this is sort of like the forward anterior tilt. Uh, so I'm going to go back into memory one here, and go back into a normal position, and then I'll demonstrate what, what the actual active reach is. Ah, it's already squeaking. That's the thing with these permobiles. If you get any dust or dirt in there, they squeak and rattle. Okay, so that was, uh, to be honest, I don't, I'm not sure what mode they actually call that. It's just sort of like an anterior tilt, but this next thing is actually active reach. You would normally be using this, like say you're trying to reach something off of a high shelf or out of your dryer and your feet get in the way. Like your chair lifts up but you still can't get very close to something if you're trying to reach over and into something. And that's where this feature is really handy. So I run the seat elevator all the way up. Actually, I need to time that. We'll see how long it takes. Okay, so we're at full height here. And to use this mode, all you do is push forward on your tilt toggle. It's gonna move forward a little bit. And then, I think that is completely level, it'll stop. So you let off and then you push forward again and it'll start tilting forward. It moves your feet out just a little bit. It reclines your back a tiny bit. And now, I can reach way past my toes. I don't think my toes are in frame. Now normally you're not supposed to move your chair when you're in this mode. It will lock you out from moving, so just ignore the fact that I'm moving right now. I'm just trying to get my toes in the frame so you can see. Okay, so anyways, my toes are right about here, and now I can very easily reach past them. Without this mode, just using the seat elevator. So just using the seat elevator, as you can see, my, I, can only, I can only reach out, not quite to where my toes are, but pretty close to it. So yes, active reach is a function that is very awesome. I use it quite a bit. Yeah, I'm trying to think, I don't know what the other mode is called when you, it's not quite standing. I'll, I'll look it up and then, uh, put it on the screen here. Right here we'll say that is the name of what I can't think of at the moment. So, happen to have a friend here. This is Hi. this is his farm. This is John. Uh, he has an M3, which uh, is sort of the other version of the F3. But as we found out the other day, the M3 only has two shock absorbers, and the F3 has four. So I didn't realize that was a difference. I thought all along that these were chairs were completely identical, just minus the front casters. Because if you notice, minus those awesome pinstriping, the front covers are very similar on these two chairs. And when I say very similar, I mean they are basically identical. Okay, so we're going to, we're going to demonstrate both the seat elevators here, which I think they should be the same. I think are on level ground here. So let's see here. I guess this would have been a, good, been a good time to time how long it takes. Well, I think it's like 30 seconds. It's a while. Yeah. Oh, I should have grabbed a tape measure. I want to say mine's 12. Yeah, I'm pretty sure... I have a little bit of tilt right now, so let me tilt down flat. Yep, they are twins. So the seat elevators seem to be about, I would say, the same. Actually, uh, actually, stay there real quick. I'm gonna grab the camera. Since both of our chairs are elevated right now, you can take a look at his seat base, or power base there. You can see what the shape of everything looks like. We've got front casters. And then if you look at this one, it's pretty much exactly the same. We're just missing, I mean, the wheel positioning is obviously a little different between the two. But, uh, yeah, just no front casters. 
Oh, and that's the other thing. Okay, so the motors on mine are back here. They point back this way, and the motors on his point forward. So, huh, interesting. I've never had two of these right next to each other to like compare the differences, but ooh, wide angle shot. You can sort of see them both. Sweet. All right, back to earth. So one thing I was just uh, thinking of here as I was lowering the seat elevator back down, on these chairs, they go down at whatever speed they, you know, elevate at, but the last like two inches take a lot longer. Uh, so as you get down, it may feel like you are not elevated anymore, but keep holding the button, it's still moving. Let me see if I can illustrate this here. I'm gonna raise up just a little bit here. Okay, so now we're going down and you can see how fast we're moving. At some point it'll slow down. There we go, so it seems like we're done moving, but we're still moving very slowly. And now it's actually done. So, I don't know if all the chairs are like that, but just something to note. It will, uh, it will go out of the speed inhibited mode before you get all the way down. So you can actually be a little bit elevated. See how much here. Okay. So I'm actually elevated, I would guess, probably three inches. And uh, the chair will still let you move around at full speed. Uh, so something else to note, I guess. Does yours do that too? Can you? Yes. Okay, so his M3 can do the same thing. You can be a little bit elevated and still move around. I've hit my head in the van multiple times. There you go, something to think about. Don't hit your head in the van thinking your, you know, chair's all the way down when it's not. Um, but of course, me being me, uh, I turned off all the inhibitors. <laughs> the, don't tell Permobile that. Don't, uh, well, this chair's out of warranty, so I'm not gonna try and sue them if I hit my head on a ceiling fixture or, or a ceiling fan or something, but, um, so this one, Normally, when you raise up too far, you get a yellow light. And usually there's a turtle on the screen. Here, I'll show you on his chair. So we've got the yellow light, and then we've also got the mysterious turtle. But notice over here, there's a yellow light, but there's no turtles on this screen. <laughs> and even if I move into a position where it turns red and you're not supposed to move at all, nothing up here. Um, I'm not technically allowed to publish how to do that, but if you send me a DM on Twitter, or, well, I was gonna say send me an email, don't send me an email, that's hard to do. Like, download Twitter, create an account, and send me a DM on there, and then I will provide you with some links. Uh, I can't support how to do that, I kind of have agreed with certain people that I won't tell people how to break their chairs, <laughs> um, but it is a thing. Oh, and stealth mode is also possible on this chair. If you've seen any of my other chairs, you know what I'm talking about, but allow me to demonstrate. So, as you move, you get the awesome clicking sound. But, if we turn off the brakes, notice there's no errors on the screen. We can move around now without the clicking. And his chair also moves without clicking. No clicking. Which is great when you're in a house full of people in wheelchairs and there's just constant clicking going on all the time. Until you roll down the hill backwards. Yeah, until you roll down the hill backwards. So they call it the brake release. It's actually a parking brake. As you can see, his chair is very slowly rolling. <laughs> um, and I am also very slowly rolling <laughs> right now. So that is something you have to think about. There is a very slight slope here. Let me go where it's a little bit steeper. Your chair will still stop or come very close to it, but then it'll just kind of start rolling on its own. So stealth mode is definitely a thing and same policies apply before. Maybe a little more on this one. Um, people have attempted to sue me over things that are not even this awesome. So I can tell you where to go to find out how to uh, install stealth mode for yourself, but I won't tell you, you know, directly how to do it. Well, I was just attempting to demonstrate to him how it's dangerous and see how we have P1 motor air and see how my chair is mashed into this bench right now. Um, stealth mode, you gotta remember that your brakes are off. So all we have to do is power cycle this thing and it'll go back to normal. Okay, I was attempting to demonstrate that when stealth mode is enabled, 
and you turn your chair off, it will roll with no restriction whatsoever. So any slight hill becomes dangerous. But then what I forgot as I was rolling, I was like, oh, I can just turn it back on, it'll stop. Uh-uh. If your wheels are moving when you power on the chair, it'll give you an error. Um, and then you put another dent in a Ford tailgate bench, potentially. Okay, I figure since we're out here in a place that has gravel, I might as well test the suspension and potentially compare the two. Um, so let me see here. Let me find a place to set this camera down. We've got this camera set up down here and I'm gonna drive by over here and then uh, we'll compare these chairs and see how bumpy they are. Although, actually I didn't frame that shot correctly yet. Let me fold up the screen so I can see it. Behind the scenes bonus content. And then I'm gonna come down here and make sure I can see myself. Yeah, there we go. All right, cool. So I'm gonna hold this GoPro so you can see what the chair is doing and then you can look on that camera and see how bouncy it is. Originally my thought was to like have a big platter full of like wine goblets or something and see like how many of them spill. Um, but I'm not doing that. All right, so I'm gonna go full speed across this gravel here and you can see what the wheels are doing. So I didn't give myself enough room to get up to speed there. You can look at my hand and see. This is actually, oh, fishtailing. That's actually another thing I wanted to cover at one point was how these chairs fishtail, but okay, let's try this one more time. And I'm gonna hold the camera here so you can see my hand and how bouncy it is. Ugh. Okay, so moderately bouncy, and you can hear that the suspension does in fact make noise. And this chair has less than 50 miles on it. Um, I guess I'll talk about later on what to expect, you know, several months after owning one of these chairs, but uh, wait, did I hit record on that? Okay, I did. I actually didn't realize till we were at the fair last weekend that there was that much of a difference uh, between the suspension on these two chairs. I may have already mentioned that, but. Solid rubber tires, though, too. Uh, I have solid on these as well. Oh, you do? Yeah. Yeah, we have solid rubber tires on both of these. Um, so, I don't know, like, if you're somewhere where you don't have to worry about flats and you have an M3, air-filled tires might be the way to go to improve the ride quality a little bit. But I guess it's because the motors are facing different directions on these chairs. Um, they had to design things differently or whatever, but anyways, let me uh, turn off this camera before we use up all the memory cards. So I've just been informed that the gravel gets much worse if we go down this other road. So I'm gonna go down here and see what it looks like. Uh, I do have an easy lock on the bottom of this chair, so I will need to be somewhat careful about getting buried because it's essentially just a bolt that's sticking down and uh, it acts like a tiller and stops you from moving. Oh, by the way, this is still pretty bouncy here. It's attempting to knock my hand off of the joystick, but luckily I have one of these big things that I can just lay my hand on top of. Ugh. Yeah, it's even hard to keep my hand on the joystick. And this is what the ground looks like. As you can see, it's like not crazy big rock, but just, um, yeah. Oh yeah, that's definitely more bumpy. Yeah. Ugh. Ugh. Okay, there we go. And that's that's kind of what we're dealing with here. Ah uh, yes, and, and little rocks will get stuck in your tread too, and they'll get sucked through the fender, so occasionally you'll hear sounds like rocks that are getting stuck in fenders. <laughs>
Okay, that's enough of that. So I was just reminded that we need to test this thing in grass as well. That's probably one of the most common questions I get about different chairs is how do they handle the grass? So we conveniently have a koi pond and some grass. I'm not gonna be testing the amphibious functionality yet today, but um, has this been watered recently? Um, or do you think it, do you think I'm gonna get stuck in it? I don't think so. <laughs> That's good, good enough for me. I'll do it. <laughs> uh, Let me go out there and see what it's like. Okay. <laughs> He's gonna volunteer his chair to see. Uh... Oh yeah, it's fine. Good. Yeah, it's pretty deep, but I think it should be good. It did rain yesterday, so Yeah. Might be a little residual. Um, so I'm gonna switch to the GoPro because I've been spoiled by this thing. And attempting to hold this camera still is a lot more work than you realize, especially if you've gotten used to one of these. <laughs> I try to aim it so you just barely can't see my hand, but and then I try to not look up at it because it's not professional. Yeah. Okay, I think we have some sort of camera angle. So here we go, grass. Seems to be working fine. Ooh, this is actually pretty deep. They're gonna get back and be like, what's with all the tracks in the grass? I just realized there's one thing we need to check. I'm gonna see how much grass is stuck on the easy lock bolt. I'm not sure if you can even see it, but I'm gonna point the camera around down here and then I'll try to do some post filming editing magic and see. But I was realizing it's kind of hard to see, but there's a third wheel mark in the middle when I was running out there from that bolt. <laughs> One more test that's actually pretty pointless. Um, there's a little brick patio here that has a bit of a lip, and I'm gonna see if I can get up there with an easy lock on this chair. How long till someone gets home that can pull me out? Yeah. Oh, okay, so if something happens, we should be all right. I don't think I'll get stuck. Usually with easy locks, you can get up over things, no problem, but getting back down is where you get high centered. Let's try it. Oh, there's a little wood thing there. Yeah. Oh yeah, that'll be fine. No problem. Plenty of clearance. Quality backdrop, look at that. Ivy, nice little sitting area. A random head on a pike for some reason. <laughs> Not sure what that's all about, but you know, I'll go with it. So one other thing I wanna talk about, I'll explain it more later, but these chairs, the F3 and the F5, have a gyroscope for stabilization on them. Stabilization. If you do any tuning on your chair, it can get unstable. We've got a nice flat area here, so I'm gonna set the camera down and attempt to demonstrate that. With their stock programming, you don't really have this issue. Well, maybe you do a little bit, but as soon as you try to turn up any settings, it can get out of control pretty easily. So let me see if I can replicate it here. It's usually when you're running at full speed and you're not holding your hand perfectly still. And you try to like, there we go. And you try to like over. Okay, I don't know how that looked on camera. I've got some other footage that I've taken previously, but the trick with these chairs is you have to concentrate on holding your joystick completely forward. The problem is when you try to turn, the suspension's gonna bind up a little bit and you're gonna move. So as you move, your hand winds up moving the joystick a little bit. So you lean one way and then your arm kind of moves. And then if you're used to a chair that doesn't have a gyroscope, you're naturally gonna try and correct it a little bit anyways. 
So you kind of have to forget everything that you know about driving a chair that doesn't have a gyroscope and just concentrate on holding your hand completely forward. And you have two options if it starts fishtailing on you. One, stop, which that's no fun. Two, concentrate on holding forward and not even like, even little tiny movements like this you have to avoid. And that might be hard to do because your chair is flinging you left and right violently. Um, so if you're wondering about performance on an F3, the stock programming, eh, it leaves a little bit to be desired, but that's for safety. And that's kind of because these gyroscope stabilization or ESP systems have limits. Now the F5 is a little different. It's actually got really good profile set up on it and the way its motors and the gyroscope and everything works on that, the stock programming is actually really good. But these, um, not so much, but I'll explain more about that later. I'm not paying attention. Oh yeah, there is a little root there. Okay, let me, let me try that actually. Yeah, so normally when the issues happen with the gyroscope problems is when you have an uneven surface, which ironically is what they're trying to prevent, but whatever. So if we're going at speed, and we try to go up here and hit this little root. And then, yeah, it started getting a little bit sideways there. Um, let me try going the other way here. Yeah, I can tell it's trying to get away from me, but I think I just have a firm grip on this joystick and I'm kind of used to it. Yeah, then is what happens, you kind of like fishtail or try to like careen off of one side of the path. Yeah. Yeah. It's me multiple times. So most M3s do not have a gyroscope in it, but his does. Um, yeah, and that's the thing, like if you just stop for a second, then you can regain control and keep going. But anyways, um, Permobile, call me. I have some notes on these gyroscopes on how they can be fixed. I actually spent three months installing a gyroscope on a Frontier V6 and I got it set up properly. Um, there is a way to do it. Uh, that'll probably be a different video, but um, you can run these in sort of a passive mode that still gives you some of the benefits, but it doesn't make your chair fishtail wildly. Little yappy dogs. <laughs> now, I was talking about active reach before and I have actually a pretty good demonstration here. Got a washer and dryer that are stacked, and um, when you try to reach into the dryer, even using the seat elevator, you've only got so much room because your feet are sticking out here, and then trying to reach into the thing is a little difficult. So, I will give you a demo of this. But this lens is not wide enough angle. Oh wait, I think I have a wide conversion adapter for this. There we go. The coloration is a little bit weird because of the, um, the LED lights here I have for these house plants. <laughs> but, yeah, that's perfect. All right. So seat elevator is all the way raised. And sometimes what I'll do is try to, like, turn my feet sideways a little bit so I can get really close to this. There is one nice thing about this washing machine, though. And that is this part kind of goes in. So you can sort of get your toes in there a little ways but your foot plates are still in the way. So here we are in front of this thing. And as you can see, just sitting here, I can just touch the front of it. If I lean forward, I can get in here and get to things, but I can only get my hand in there about yay far. So let's use the active reach mode. We're all the way elevated. And all I need to do is push forward on the tilt. It'll stop at level and then let off, push again. Make sure you have your knee bolsters attached or your seat belt really tight. And uh, let me set my phone down. And then, you don't have to go very far, just a little bit. There we go. And now you can see the angle of the chair here is forward. My feet, while they're still pretty close, the angle of the chair allows me to lean forward more and reach into this thing. Let me tilt a little bit more here. There we go. Now I can get right up here. And now I can get like most of my arm in here if I lean forward or I could even touch my nose on the front of this thing probably. 
So now it becomes a lot easier to reach in here and uh, get everything out. And after all that, your seat is in kind of an insane position, so you can just use your memory seating mode to go back to your preset. Squeak. There we go which is actually a pretty good segue into the next thing I wanted to talk about. After owning uh, pretty much any Permobile chair that has 3G seating, or pretty much any of them, when you first get them, everything's nice, it's all clean, everything's pretty quiet and whatnot. It's not necessarily a functional problem, but you're gonna have to remember that as soon as you go down sidewalks, you start getting dust and dirt into things. Like, no matter how clean you try to keep it, there's a lot of components on these chairs that they don't interfere with each other, but you will get squeaks and rattles. I did another video a while back that I'll link below that talks about de-squeaking the 3G backs on these chairs. Essentially, it's just hot gluing in some uh, Velcro strips that go between the metal and metal surfaces. It's not a functional issue, and like the seat elevator, you can hear some noises from that, some clicking or grinding or whirring. The seat elevators actually have a belt drive on these. So after you cycle them a few times, like I said, this chair's got less than 60 miles on it, and we're already getting some of those noises when the actuators move and things tilt and whatnot. Now you could go after all this stuff and try to use like some silicone lube spray or dry lubrication stuff. And it is good to keep a lot of that stuff, you know, keep after it, keep the dust out, you know, use canned air or whatever. But at some point, you're not gonna wanna slather grease on everything. And you just kind of have to decide what squeaks and rattles are okay and which ones drive you insane. Now, if you're bumping down the sidewalk and you're getting squeaks all the time, I mean, it could be your shock absorbers. And same thing, you can use some of the silicone lubricant spray on the shock absorber dampeners. You don't want to use WD-40 or anything like that that has an effect on rubber. But, I mean, I've encountered a couple of people that don't have any noises at all and their chair is fine. But... The more you use these, just be aware, you're gonna get noise from the suspension, noise from the seating, noise from the actuators, things like that. More often than not, it's not anything that's detrimental or gonna break anything, but just keep it in the back of your mind. Here's a few random clips just running around driving the chair in a few different situations just to kind of give you an idea of how it looks and sounds in uh, certain scenarios.
I guess in conclusion, if you watch my channel at all, you've seen that I primarily have a lot of permobiles, and that's kind of what I've been sticking with forever. The build quality is really good. They have Rnet control systems, which are highly customizable. And like I was saying before, um, gaining OEM, you have to gain OEM access to the chair to change a lot of the features and the functions that I like to adjust. Now, like I said, I can't specifically tell you how to do that, but I can point you in the right direction. But keep in mind, um, warranties may be affected if you do have a warranty. And there are some other things that I would advise not screwing around with. And especially if you have an M5 or an F5. Those chairs, they are at the limits with what these Rnet control systems are capable of handling. And they've kind of had to make a few changes and do some things. And the ICS master module is actually spoofing some functions that an Rnet seating controller would be handling. And if you go in there and try to change anything, um, it's all, a, I won't say it's a delicate balance, but it's not a good idea to screw around with some of the low level settings on the F5, uh, especially if you have the standing functions and other things like that. But luckily the F5 comes programmed very well. Now I personally haven't used one. I haven't taken one on a test drive. I've just had feedback from a few other people and I've looked at the programming that is actually on that chair. And it's actually pretty close. Like honestly, all I would probably do is increase the reverse speed if I did have an F5. They are a little bit bigger footprint than the F3, but the F3 is a very good chair. It's got decent suspension for mostly indoor and you know running around on sidewalks. I I wouldn't really call it an off-road chair. There isn't really an off-road package for it. The motors do have a lot of torque. You can get up hills and stuff, no problem. I mean, this thing will climb hills way faster than my Bounder. But these chairs are sort of the Toyota Camry, if you will, of you know power chairs. They're reliable, they last a while, they're pretty much just gonna work and do most of the things you need to. I mean, you can get some options, like you've seen on this one, I have the uh, star, star cap uh, wheel caps on there instead of those disgusting orange reflectors <laughs> that they come with, which by the way, that is a free option when you order a chair. So if your insurance company says, I don't wanna pay for that, um, tell them to look again, because it doesn't cost anything to get that instead of the reflectors. Now, maybe for safety reasons, your insurance company will say, hey, you need reflectors, but push back a little bit. You can get those and they look a lot better. It makes the chair just overall, I think a lot more classy. <laughs> but anyways, that's kind of my overall perspective on this chair. It's, it's like a new refined version of the C500 and I love the C500. In fact, I still have one. That's what I was using up until I got this thing. The only reason the C500 wasn't my daily driver is it's a little bit big and heavy and the lift on my van would not pick it up. Um, this chair is a little bit lighter than the C500 was, but uh, yeah, this, if you're looking for something that's reliable, you do a lot of indoor stuff, you do some outdoor stuff, a little bit of running around in gravel and maybe grass. I mean, it's great for sidewalks and things. 6.5 miles an hour is as fast as you can get this chair. I guess I didn't mention, you've probably seen in some of the clips, this chair does not have anti-tippers on the front of it. Now, normally if you order this chair without anti-tippers, they're gonna limit your speed to five miles an hour. Now I'm six foot one and around 235, 240 pounds, something like that. And I have never encountered an, inst an instance in this chair that I felt that I needed the anti-tippers. So something to think about. I'm not saying you should take them off, just safety and whatnot, depending on your terrain and hills and everything. But I've found the extra distance that they add in front of your tires makes a difference when you're trying to reach into the microwave and get up close to the stove because you can get your drive tire right up to what you're trying to get up to and you don't have to worry about that extra gap. So, I mean, I'm real big on safety and I, you know, the seat elevators on these things are solid. I've turned off the inhibitors completely on this thing. I mean, I kind of run around and maneuver at full speed with the seat elevator elevated and I still don't feel like there's any danger of tipping over, uh, you know, when you're on a flat surface, obviously. But anyways, I think that's about all I've, uh, I can think of at this point. If you have any other questions, I'll try and answer them and I might do a follow-up later on. I've had a few people give me feedback on their chairs and whatnot, but this video is already like 45 minutes long. So anyways, uh, thanks for watching. Hopefully this gives you some insight into what these chairs are like and I, was in a position with this one since I own this chair to actually take some more time and show a few more things because typically with power chair demos, um, you get to think for maybe an hour. I mean, you might be able to get it overnight, 
depending on your dealer or vendor or whatnot, and if they allow you to check out loaners. I mean, I highly recommend that, but um, yeah, these things, uh, they work good and they're reliable. And uh, yeah, I guess that's basically it. Thanks for watching and let me know your thoughts below.